Good morning and welcome to Sunday Worship at St. George Lutheran Church. Uh, we are delighted that you are here joining us for worship, whether you are nearby or far away. And we hope and pray that this service would inspire you in your life of faith. So we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Merciful God, please show us ourselves as you see us. Give us insight so that we may be capable of genuine repentance and renewal. Convict us of all sins of indifference, prejudice, self-righteousness, and egoism. If we need gentle rebuke, please do that for us. If we need confronting and breaking down, then please do that for us. If we need healing and rehab therapy, please take us in hand and exercise us as for your glory. Brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, we know this for certain. There is no sin that lies outside the remedy of Christ's love on the cross. There is no evil that cannot be conquered by the power of the risen Lord. To those who turn from darkness to light, there is forgiveness and a new day. Accept from the hands of God the free gift of liberation and healing. It's yours for the taking. Thanks be to God. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is a feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are His. This is the feast of victory. 
Let us pray. O God of glory, your son Jesus Christ suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy so that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is from the book of Acts, chapter 1. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, they were watching. As they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken away from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The psalm is Psalm 68. Sing to the Lord, sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides on the clouds. His name is the Lord. He is exultant before him. Father of orphans and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God gives a desolate a home to live in. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious live in a parched land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the darkness, the wilderness, the earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O oh God, you showered abroad. You restored your heritage where it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O oh God, you provided for the needy. Sing to God, O oh kingdoms of the earth, Sing praises to the Lord. O rider in the heavens, the ancient heavens, listen. He sends out his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel and whose power is in the skies. Awesome is God in his sanctuary, the God of Israel. He gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. The second lesson is from the book of 1 Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's suffering, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled in the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters and all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Gospel according to St. John, chapter 17. Glory to you, Lord. 
After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, in whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me, I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Episcopalian priest Ed Colbert told of an Ascension Day service that took place when he was in seminary. On Ascension Day, the whole seminary students, faculty, deans, Everyone gathered wearing their white robes and academic regalia that the faculty had to commemorate this holy day of mystery of the Ascension. There were hymns and inspiring sermon and incense, all very high church and formal. And at the end of the service, the seminarians and faculty emerged from the chapel singing an Ascension hymn unknown to the worshipers. An enterprising student had taken one of those tacky, nearly life-size Christmas nativity figures, you know, the hollow plastic painted kind, put a robe like Jesus would wear on it, and stuffed it with a, a rocket device. As a procession of proper clergy marched into the courtyard, the students lit the fuse from the shrubs where the statue was hidden, sending the statue soaring upward, sailing through a cloud of smoke and sparks as the procession scattered and the rocket Jesus dove onto the rooftop of a nearby dormitory where the ascension rocket sputtered and died. The dean of the seminary was not impressed with the student's defense that he was simply trying to dramatize the ascension. Nor did the idea of launching a plastic Jesus ever catch on, even among the most creative liturgical innovators. And I'm sure, I'm sure that there is a part of us that would be content to treat the ascension in this way as a joke. While we use in the Apostles' Creed the phrase, we say, ascended into heaven, ascension day is not standard fare for us. You never think about it partly because we don't really recognize it. Ascension Day always occurs on the 40th day of Easter, which is always a Thursday. And we just don't have an Ascension service because who's going to come? However, this is the seventh Sunday of Easter, and the story of Acts is also dealing with the ascending of Jesus into heaven. So we're going to deal with it today. By our standards, the ascension is a strange story. After rising from the dead, Jesus spends some time with his disciples and then ascends into heaven. And as they bid, he bids them farewell, they say, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? In other words, is now finally the time when you're going to fulfill our messianic expectations and set up Israel and run out the Romans? Is this the time where you're finally going to act like a real Messiah? Is this the time? And Jesus tells them to be patient, and he ascends. And the rest of Acts will portray the disciples moving into the world, doing his work in his absence. And of course, Jesus really isn't absent, but he is now present in a different way as the church, and in the form of the Holy Spirit, and in the teaching and activity of the church. So what does the ascension have to do with you? 
The ascension signifies the end of Jesus' earthly ministry and the beginning of the disciples' ministry. The ascension is a kind of passing of the mantle. So Acts lists the 11 disciples and then talks about them praying together for the call of the Holy Spirit. It's a way that God answered the prayer that Jesus prayed that we would be one as he and the Father are one. He said, I pray that they might be one and they refers to us. And if you think about the intense division that we have seen in the past years, it's heartwarming when we realize that there are glimpses of Jesus' hoped-for unity among us. These glimpses I have seen have been fleeting, and yes, yet they have offered a kind of oneness that I think Jesus was referring to. And just this past week, I noticed this, when, as you know, there's a great deal of flooding going on in Midland, and I grew up in Midland, so a lot of my classmates and friends I've been hearing from and in a world of division and constant politicized arguing about everything, it was heartwarming to see so many people offering help. One after another, messages came offering to help. And I'm just going to read through a couple of them. There's just, there was just pages and pages of them. We have mud boats to help people or pets get rescued if need be. In future days, we have chainsaws and trucks if we can help clean up. I have cat food, an extra lot for a camper, boys' clothing, and air mattresses. Please reach out if you need any of these things. If anyone needs anything, I mean anything, message me and I will help you. Boats, canoes, physical help if needed. We will help in any way possible. I have trucks and trailers, tools, and unique set of skills, and I'm very capable with my hands. I'm looking for a way to contribute personally. We have room to stay, food, and other supplies. Message if you need anything. Love and stay safe. I'm willing to help in any way I can. I have an extra bedroom with some hot meals for someone in need. I'm willing to help any way possible, labor to help those in need of moving, shelter to help those in a place of stay. Please do not hesitate to contact me, praying for all in need. We can house any type of animal from farm to dogs or cats. I reside in southern Indiana. I'm coming to Gladwin this weekend. I'd like to offer help in any way that I can. Please let me know where to drop items. I'm available, any need, please help me, and so on. Those are just a small sampling of the many, many messages that came through. And is that not what Jesus had in mind when he prayed that we would be one, that we would help one another and we would care for those in need? I pray that they would be one. And Jesus ascended into heaven, and the mantle was passed to us. We say in the Apostles' Creed, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And that's another way that God works to answer Jesus' prayer that we would be made one. In 2010, Easter Sunday fell on April 4th. It had been a hard year for my family because my dad had died just before Christmas of the previous year, so 2009, he died just a few months earlier. It was one of those where you go through a year of first, the first holiday without your loved one, and this was the first Easter without my dad. And so we had my mom over for Easter dinner to hopefully take her mind off of the fact that he wasn't there. And during Easter dinner, the phone rang, and I got up to answer, and it was my cousin. And he told me that his dad had died that morning. This was my mom's only sibling and my only uncle. And I got the details, and I sat back down at dinner thinking, well, I'd better wait until dinner's over to tell my mom. But not 10 seconds later, the topic of conversation turned to my uncle as one of my kids just happened to ask my mom about her brother. And she said, oh yeah, we talk regularly on the phone. He's living in Cedar Rapids now, right, Sharon? And I gulped and I said, well, actually, and that was the end of the festive Easter dinner. And it was particularly heartbreaking for my mom to lose her husband and brother within five months of each other. She was the last of that remain of that generation. And when she died in 2018, I thought of the words of Jesus that they may be one as we are one. And I realized that they were back together 
they were united again as one. And the oneness that Jesus speaks of is of this, both of this world and the world to come. And it is that which brings us together in spite of all that would keep us apart. The Mount of Olives is said to be uh, one of the sites said to be where Jesus ascended. And on that site is now Augusta Victoria Hospital, which is run by the Lutheran World Federation. And the hospital staff serve Palestinians who are living in the occupied territories. And you talk about a place of intense division. In the hospital chapel is a mosaic of the ascension. And it depicts Jesus ascending, but it has something rather unique about it because Jesus is there, but there's an angel flanking him on either side. The, the angels are not looking at Jesus like you would expect, but they are looking clearly at the congregation as if to ask, what are you standing looking into heaven? Don't just stand there, do something. Jesus prayed that we would be one. And he ascended into heaven to make that prayer a reality through the work of Jesus and his disciples here, that's us, and through his work to reunite us in heaven with one as the Father. Thanks be to God. Amen.
confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of power and strength, you take a ragtag bunch of denying disciples and feckless followers, and you create a new community of servants who seek to do your will. You call us and give us a new vocation by which we serve the broken of our communities in which we live. In our world of division and anger, let your love overcome boundaries. Let our faith guide our words and actions. And we remember those who have gone before us and rejoice that they are now one with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in Midland County affected by flooding, Strengthen spirits and courage. Help those who are emotionally or financially devastated. We pray for those affected by COVID-19, for those who are ill, those who care for them, as well as those who are researching the virus. We remember those in countries with little infrastructure, such as Haiti, and those in refugee camps as they fight this virus with no outside help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with the family of Carol Effner, who died this past week. We are grateful for her life and grateful that she now rests in you and abides with those who have gone before her. Please comfort her family and give them peace and acceptance and hope. We pray for all who grieve the loss of loved ones. We pray for all those who struggle and suffer we pray for those on our prayer list and those we name from our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for hearing our prayers, which we offer in the name of Christ. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our worship is done. But our service will continue in every moment of our lives. The hour has come to serve those around us, to shoulder the burdens of our sisters, and to ease the pain of our brothers. The hour has come to glorify God with our prayers as well as our praise. 
with songs as well as acts of service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. is risen today Alleluia Our triumphant holy day Alleluia Who did once upon the cross Alleluia Suffered to redeeming loss Thank you again for joining us for worship. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.